Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. We're out in the bush in Good News Bay, Alaska on a rare sunny day. We're going to show you weatherization in a remote Yupik Eskimo village on the Bering Sea where everything is unique. From shipping supplies in on a barge, to hiring crew members from the local village, down to the weatherization measures installed to keep these residents warm during the brutal Alaskan winters. Those are whale ribs. We not only come in and fix and weatherize all the houses for them, but we also supply them with a job. It doesn't normally come around here very often. What are they normally doing then for jobs? How do they live out here? Mostly commercial fishing um, and subsistence is a big thing. And we have to work right along with that because we have to understand that, you know, we're leaving here in November and they're not going to have a job after that. And it's going to be a long, cold, hard winter out here. And so during the, their work season, they also have to have time to go do their subsistence fishing and hunting. What do most people hunt around here? Starmigan. Seal? Yeah. Terrible when they come around. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have a moose season about once, a, once a year for about three days on the river. That's coming up pretty quick, isn't it? So, how does Good News Bay compare to some of the other villages that you've worked in? Good News Bay is, is very um, English oriented. Whereas other villages I've worked in, um, they're, they're very Yupik oriented. You find yourself picking up Yupik real quick in other villages. That's great. Can you speak a little uh, for us? Like, I say see. thank you. Koyana. So we've got we've got uh, Yupik populations down here in Good News Bay. And what were you saying? Some of the other uh, native peoples are. Well, there's the Inupiats are on the northern coast, northwestern okay. coast. Uh, further south, I think basically across the mountains, there is the Aleuts. And then as you get further up the river, it's the Athabascans, the Indians. So what type of climate is this? Uh, what are we looking at for temps and wind and all that? Oh, they, it sounds like they get steady winds here <laughs> all winter. I mean, yeah. they were saying the other day, 90, 100 mile an hour winds is not uncommon. I mean, it's not every day, but it's pretty regular. You think they have any wind? I think it was four winters ago, the house blew off the blocks. And the whole thing was just off, sitting in the mud. <laughs> we had to jack it back up and re-block it. It just blew it right off the blocks. It blew Connex, their Connex across the street blew over on its side. It was 96 miles an hour on that one. I think, I might even guess, 30, 40 below is not unusual either. Maybe not mm -hmm. every day, but I'm sure they get weeks at a time that could be that cold. So. And then middle of summer, what do they get up to? Is it real hot here? Is I'm gonna guess being on the ocean, probably 70s a hot day. Yeah. Maybe maybe occasional 80, but I mean, like right today, it's probably what 65. I mean, it's comfortable by all means, but. Uh, so truly a heating climate. Yeah. All, virtually all the time. Yeah. <laughs> there is 72 houses here. 72 houses, and how many are you guys weatherizing? 64. 64 of them. You know, when we showed up, it was gray, dilapidated houses. You know, when we left, it, it, it looks like we've rebuilt a village. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah it's a good feeling.
right here is our old part of town. This is the original part of the village. 1930s, 1940s. There were your shiplap siding and grass insulation inside of them. These walls are insulated with uh, grasses from the tundra. You see the old burial site here. Um, this was probably built in the 70s um, with the new generator. Um, and up here we have the new housing houses. Before there was snow machines or anything here, I mean, this was a common occurrence. Everybody I see. had dog sled teams here. Yeah. They had a, a gift of bug spray. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's fantastic. That's exactly what we need. So we're here with Mimi Burbage. And, right. and Mimi, what is your title? Who do you uh, well, work for? I'm the program manager for Alaska Housing for the statewide weatherization program. So your agency provides the money for all of this work. Right. We get federal funding and we use a lot more state funding. Okay. These projects. So it's not just DOE weatherization no. funding? No, we have State of Alaska funding, which is actually a much bigger portion of the pie. So I see a lot of a lot of the work that we've been covering here has been sort of beyond what some of those weatherization funds right. can cover. How does that work together? How do well, you... the Department of Energy average cost per unit is, is now 6500 But we can't even come into a village for anywhere near that kind of money and make a difference because of the cost of shipping, uh, a lot of times we're flying stuff in, otherwise we're barging stuff in. And if you are going to buy a two by four, and the prices of all of that have gone up this last year anyway, you have to figure that the shipping is going to be the same cost, if not more. So, so you're, you're price doubling, of materials, you double it. Yeah, at to get least. It this village, we got everything sent in by barge. Okay, how, from how Seattle. often? From Seattle. Yeah. All right. So that's a ways. How often uh, does that come in? Um, generally, they'll get maybe three or four barges a summer in here. Materials, a lot of fuel barges come in here. So you got to make sure you got pretty much all your supplies on that barge. You bet. You yeah. bet. If you have to get anything flown in here, you're going to pay probably four times what it's worth. Yeah, and we saw out there, it's uh, it's quite the ordeal to barge things in to this right. particular bay. Right. They really have to wait for the right yeah. timing and exactly. be waiting there quite a while. We work primarily in the rural areas, the western part of the state, from uh, Good News Bay in the south up through Kotzebue, Noatak, up all up in the western coast. Um, that's that's quite an area. Yeah. I am the field supervisor for Rural Cap out here, and that's kind of a big job in itself. I've got 36 local employees that have to be trained up first before they can even go to work. That's something we have to do in every village. Are these seasoned workers? Are they brand new to the Some train? of them are seasoned. You know, they have a lot of uh, work partnership programs that take people, you know, guys out of the village here and they do training programs for them. And then a big part of my job is keeping track of materials, making sure the right materials go to each job because, I mean, logistically where we're at here, we're, you know, we're three weeks away from anything minimum so we have a limited amount of time limited amount of materials and somebody just has to be on top of that at all times what is kind of the average size of some of these homes six to seven hundred square feet average okay. a big one is a thousand square feet mm -hmm. and you get them as small as I don't know, two or three hundred square feet yeah, and how many people are living in an average home uh, <laughs> boy that's idea? all over the place it is can be it? from a single person to 12, 15, 13, grade. probably 14, I mean, maybe. Oh, looking around, I, I see a lot of houses that look like this. Is this pretty standard for the housing stock? This is pretty typical of the, of the whole west coast of Alaska on the Bering Sea because uh, the permafrost and also the flood dangers. You know, up on this village, particular village here, we have some high ground, but most that I've worked in so far are right at sea level. You're, you're right in the swamp. I mean, you're literally in boardwalks and you get off the boardwalk you're up to your knees in swamp. So if you get a good southwest wind coming when the tide comes in it'll push it right up into the village and, and, and you'll be stuck in your house for a couple of hours. This ground feels soft right now but if you were to dig down two maybe two feet you'd hit solid permafrost. So in the winter time it everything hardens and mm -hmm. it shifts and the houses will lift up and down up and down and that's why we make these adjustable. We can unbolt these shim it, cut them down, whatever we got to do to make it. The house was leaning this way. I had to lift it from the ground. I used uh, airbags to lift it up. 
because of the condition of the housing, there's a lot more incipient type of repairs that have to be done to, to make those measures work. We work on, you know, leveling some of the foundations. Mm -hmm. uh, we place, fix a lot of stairs. They're just unsafe for people walking in and Center out of the house. Health and safety, you know, health yeah. And safety. We do some roofing because, hey, if it leaks, what good does it do us to insulate the attic? So. That's right. <laughs> you know, because the cost of fuel and electricity is so high out here, every measure pretty much meets the SIR. We don't have a problem proving out windows in many replacement um, scenarios or doors. But um, what we, we still try to target those things that are the most efficient, like the wall wraps, the insulation in the attic, the insulation in the floor. So Ralph, what are the typical measures that you're installing on these houses? Well, I guess starting with the floor, we're usually adding insulation. Sometimes we'll drill holes down through each joist cavity and blow fill and dense pack the rim joists at least. As soon as you turn the blower door on, the linoleum on the floor comes up. It'll do the same thing in the winter time when the wind's just coming through here, you know, 50, 60 miles an hour. So that's just cold air yeah. coming through. We're putting it two inch styrene foam. It allows a uh, insulating layer with these houses being up on these stilts like this off the ground. We usually put a couple inches of foam board underneath and then cover that with plywood. Most of the floors are two by six, so they got R19. Well, we're getting another R10 in there anyhow. What else do you do on these? For the most part, we've been wrapping the walls, the two by six or two by four. A lot of them are two by four construction. I mean, they mm -hmm. look great in California, but <laughs> yeah. not quite adapted for Alaska. We've got our foam, we've got our Tyvek, and our one by four. You just do all this for moisture then to have an airspace back here. You'll yeah, let's just breathe, yeah. exactly. So we're actually cutting quite a bit of airflow through the walls, I think, plus adding some insulation. And then this is and just this for uh, 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 birds bird and, and stuff? Put that up like yeah. that? And it prevents the uh, insects from going yep. inside there. This area that we're in here, the Arctic Entry, is a cold room where they'll do a majority of their cleaning of their animals and their wildlife. Right now we're wrapping this Arctic Entryway door, just like the rest of the house wrap. Do all the house wrap and everything. The paint is one of the best things we can do for the house is put a good paint on it and seal everything up. You guys do paint all these, and uh, who's choosing all the colors? I see a couple different ones out there. We pretty much let the homeowner decide. Doesn't matter to you cost-wise, and makes them happy. Sure. Yeah. And it brightens the village. It makes for yeah. a very colorful <laughs> yes. village. The green and blue are the most the favorites for people. Gotcha. That's the one I'd want. Then we get up into the attic, we do a lot of air sealing on the ceiling itself. Most of the houses have plywood on the ceilings. Sheetrock is just about impossible to get out here intact, so wood, wood works. These are batten strips on the ceiling. We use these for air sealing on every crack and gap in the plywood. They get caulked beforehand on the backside, stuck up there. Yeah. So, but all those joints tend to leak air, so we caulk that, and then we can blow coat from the top side. As far as insulation, is there a lot in there to begin with? Some have already been blow filled years before, mm -hmm. but most, no. How about this house? What'd you find? About two feet of wet insulation, both blow fill and back insulation. From leaky roof or from interior from moisture? The interior moisture. Yeah. It is a very humid house. Well, what you guys did to get this weather removed. We had a great day. Last month, we only had just one day of sunshine. Well, so. We got some nice weather here today, and it's uh, one of the first in three days that I have gone to take off my long johns. Do you do anything in the attics as far as moisture, as far as ventilation? Well, we put gable end vents in. Okay. A lot of times just one, because the wind is so bad here, you want to do as minimal as possible, but not to let the moisture out. The, out the only thing different we do is the cover and then inside you've got your regular gable vent, but behind the gable vent, we have to put a piece of landscape fabric, put it behind the gable vent itself and then seal it all as one because we, it's tough for you to tell in the summertime, but in the wintertime, the 70 to 80 mile an hour winds blowing snow will just snow fill it, that it, will, it will go right through that vent and, and fill the entire attic full of snow overnight. Park 
your truck outside, you have to park it into the wind. If you park it this way, the snow swirls around and it fills up your whole engine compartment. Mm. When you get out there and your engine won't even turn over because it's full of snow. You open the hood and it's like full of snow. If you have a little crack in your door on the porch like this, it'll fill your whole porch up with snow. Yep. It just drifts in and covers the walls and the ceiling and it makes a cave out of it. And, you know, and plus you'll have an eight foot drift up to your overhand. Exactly. Right. You wake up the next day and the window's packed. Well, what other measures do you do? Anything with, uh, with electricity or furnaces, windows, anything? We change out quite a few windows. There's a lot of them that are just single pane. Mm -hmm. Or if they're thermal pane, frames are tore up. You can't get them to close, you can't repair them. It's cheaper for us to just put a new window in. So this is one of our new windows we put in here. Uh, triple pane, they're, I believe it's up to an R5. Oh yeah. They're a light commercial grade, so hopefully they're gonna hold up to the wind a little bit better than the old ones out here. A lot of the windows we come across have no foam in between the wall and the window. One of the biggest leak points we have. As soon as we seal them up, put new trim on them, it's irrelevant now. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to tighten these up as much as you can and then put ventilation in mechanical the right spots. Ventilation. Mechanical yep. ventilation. It kind of ends up being a prescriptive approach okay. in a way. We use a computer analysis on every house so we can track savings, predictive savings, and uh, we do blower door testing on every house. We do zonal pressure testing on some houses. This is unique to us out here. Most people use a blower door fan for it. These houses are so small out here and tight that I can get away with using a duct blaster on, on almost every one of them. And being as how we get from job to job with the four-wheeler, it's very portable. You know, the science is there. You're going through right. blower door testing and even zonal testing with blower doors in, in right. some cases. But many of these houses, you come into them and you well, know already a lot of the things. They're, they're that... similar in style. They're very small. They're um, not complicated roof lines. You can uh, pretty much nail down top five, six measures when you first come out, but you're still looking for those nuances with exactly. each one. How many people are living in the house? How much ventilation do you need? Um, do they have uh, more combustion appliances than a heating system? So this is a fresh 80 or Swedish vent. Um, normally we would just mount it and have the original cover with it, but out here we have to cover them up because the wind will just blow through there. It allows uh, fresh air to come in as the Panasonic sucking out any kind of humidity in the house. Ventilation is a big thing here, not only for mm -hmm. the, the safety of the combustion appliances, but also uh, I'm assuming you have a lot of uh, condensation buildup right. in these houses. Some of these clients are, are needing their homes for, I noticed a lot of clotheslines in there, drying their clothes. Well, some of them are overcrowded mm -hmm. for sure. the size of the house. And so we put in uh, Panasonics in every house. And okay. Rural Cap uses humidistats. And so we always have some sort of control that helps the fan to run when it's needed. We do spend a lot of time trying to explain to them what's going on. And uh, most of them are aware of mold, so they don't want that to happen. Yeah. And that's another part of our client education. We try to connect all those dots to make sure that people understand that this is a result of this. Pretty much minimal on electricity. About all we do is put the fans in, put some compact fluorescents in, we'll change out some light fixtures. So all right, so you, you drop the base load a bit. Trying to. Uh, adding the fans and, every, and range hoods for safety, yeah. but balancing right. that with, right. with the expense with of electricity. electricity. What, what is the cost of, of electricity out here? The electricity is generated by a diesel generator in each of the villages and distributed to the household so it's super expensive. It's kind of twofold. It's subsidized up for like the first 700 kilowatts. And, okay. And I don't know exactly but I'm going to guess it's 25 or 30 cents is what they pay right now. Still pretty high. Yeah, yeah. unsubsidized is probably 50 or 60 cents. And well, how much are they paying for fuel here? 671 is gas, stove oil is 575 or yeah. 73 or something. Yeah. So. And if they run out of fuel oil or uh, or propane in the winter time and they have to fly it in, mm -hmm. then it skyrockets. General store right here. Check it out. New Bay. Nine dollars for a uh, oil. Yeah. 
so tube adapt is about three times the cost yeah. of what we pay. Many of them have the little sealed combustion Toyo stoves, and if they don't, we often put them in. Sealed combustion space heater, they're very efficient. So this is a Toyo stove here. This is pretty popular out throughout Alaska because they're efficient, they're safe. Stove oil in units. <laughs> Seem to be a pretty good option for these, these smaller, tighter homes. Right. This is a Toyo hot water heater and it's super high efficiency seal combustion oil system and on demand so it's very efficient for a situation like this and that was just about two years ago mm -hmm. that they Three brought the water ago. system in right okay yeah before that they didn't have water to the houses right. yeah i came out here this winter um, for about a month surveyed all the houses and at the same time made applications available spread the word around the village that we are going to be here we're going to be hiring locally and we'll be here from May to November. May is typically when spring arrives here. So we can start working then. The barge won't get here till mid-June, maybe July. We don't have, know when winter is going to come. And uh, lots of times they get surprised with the early winter. By the oh, middle of November, we're pretty well shut down between darkness and weather-wise. People are very happy here so far. They're noticing a difference already. There's yeah, a lot of wind in Good News Bay. So by doing the wall wrap and the floor insulation, we've made an immediate noticeable difference in the house. Yeah, you sure have. And they, uh, uh, several of our clients have already told us they can hardly wait for winter to see how, how well the house is prepared. I was hearing that, just yeah. walking around the village, they were right. excited for winter to come. Right. Pretty nice to be, uh, be working on your own community's houses. And you're, you're working on other people's houses, and no, this is they're working on yours. Place. This is your sister's right here. Yeah. All right. And that one over there with the vinyl siding coming off, that's my youngest sister. Okay. Yeah, so the whole family's uh, working on the whole family. Yeah, it looks like, uh, like a little bit of weather's coming in. Fog's coming in, huh? Uh, Gonna get socked in. Well, we're gonna end up leaving a day early. We're a bit bummed out about that, but uh, we do have some weather rolling in as, as you can see, and you can get stuck out here for days or even weeks if you don't get out on the right flight. I noticed that they got from one of the kids after we'd worked on their grandmother's house. <laughs>